Welcome back to my video series where I go through Betaflight 4.3 Configurator and show you every single tab, every single option, explain what it is and how to set it up. In this video, we're looking at the video transmitter tab. And if that's what you're here for, stick around. But I do wanna let you know, there's a link in the video description to a playlist where we start from the very beginning and work our way through the whole thing. And if you're looking for a general tutorial on all things Betaflight, that link's down there for you. You can just start at the beginning and work your way through. Onto the video transmitter tab. And the first thing you should know about the video transmitter tab is that if you are using DJI FPV, then this has no purpose for you. This is only used with analog video transmitters and HD0 video transmitters also use it, but DJI doesn't. So RIP my analytics, on to the next video in the, in the playlist. Okay, if you're still here, what is smart audio? and tramp telemetry. That's where we got to start. And here's the problem that the video transmitter tab is trying to solve. What am I pointing at here? This is my analog video transmitter and these are the buttons that are used to change the band, the channel, and the power that the video transmitter is using. And these are critical, like output power. Well, you always want the most output power possible, right? So you have the maximum range possible, except if you go to a race, they're gonna make you turn down to 25 milliwatts. So how do you do that? Band and channel, also super important. Again, if you're at a race, they're gonna want you to be on a specific channel because two video transmitters that are on the same channel or are too close together channel will interfere with each other and you wanna avoid that. If you're out flying with your friends, and one of them's on channel race eight and one's on channel race five and you want to go fly. Well, all you got to do is put your video transmitter on channel race one and you can fly at the same time as them with no interference. H how do you do that? If you got to push buttons and oh, hold on guys, and dee, 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 dee. I mean, this video transmitter is fairly well designed. The buttons are extremely easy to push. There's a separate button for band and channel. Some video transmitters are way harder and some don't even have a button. So the purpose of these two VTX remote control protocols, TBS Smart Audio and IRC Tramp, is to let the flight controller tell the video transmitter what band, channel, and output power it should be on without you ever having to touch the video transmitter or press a button. Immersion RC Tramp and TBS Unify. If you're using one of these video transmitters, then it should be pretty obvious which of these two protocols your video transmitter supports. Immersion RC Tramp supports the Immersion RC Tramp protocol and all TBS Unify video transmitters, as well as any other TBS video transmitter like the 69, they all use the smart audio protocol. TBS and uh, Immersion RC invented these protocols and that's what their video transmitters use. But many third-party video transmitters also support one of these protocols. So over here on the right, we've got the Rush FPV Tank Solo VTX. And if I scroll through the product listing right here, bingo, Smart Audio. Rush Tank has built-in Smart Audio Control Protocol. Meanwhile, over on the left, here's the Diatone Mamba. And this one's a little harder to find the actual specs, but if we look down in the Q&A section of this listing, someone asks, what does it support? And there's an answer that it supports TRAMP. There we go. Is a smart audio compatible? No, it uses IRC TRAMP. So whenever you buy a video transmitter, you're gonna to wanna to know which of these protocols it supports. So let's start a discussion of the video transmitter tab with the current values section. And this is gonna show you the current status of the video transmitter. The VTX type here says smart audio unknown. And what that means is that Betaflight knows in the ports tab, that I have told it that I have a smart audio video transmitter instead of an IRC tramp video transmitter. But unknown we are seeing because next line, device ready, no. Device ready, no, means that the flight controller is not talking to the video transmitter. And in this case, the reason for that is that the video transmitter's powered down. We don't have a battery plugged in. So it's not talking at all. Let's plug in a battery and see what happens. And you can see that as soon as I do that, VTX type updates to Smart Audio 2.0 unlocked. Why does it still say device ready? No, it should really say device ready, yes. That's, there we go. I had to click away to another tab and come back. 
that line didn't automatically update, I'm not sure why. Device ready, yes, means that the flight controller is communicating to the video transmitter. And if you are ever trying to get smart audio or tramp telemetry to work, you need to see device ready, yes, in that field. Otherwise, nothing else you do matters. In order to get that talking, you need to have the video transmitter wired correctly to the flight controller, and you need to have the ports tab set with the correct protocol on the correct UART. This isn't a wiring and setup video, so we're not going to go into that. We're just going to stay focused on the Betaflight configurator. Now, that VTX type can give some additional interesting information. It's telling us that we're using Smart Audio 2.0, and the reason that's relevant is the Smart Audio has several different versions, and you have to load the correct VTX table for your Smart Audio version. We're going to talk about VTX table a little later. But knowing the Smart Audio version, 1.0, 2.0, or 2.1, or the th I think that's all of them, will help you load the correct VTX table later. Also, it's showing us that this VTX is unlocked. TBS ships their video transmitters locked, and in order to use higher output powers and all the available channels, you need to unlock them. This is showing us that someone has gone through that process of unlocking the VTX. And then continuing down, we can see the band, the channel, the frequency, and the output power that the VTX is on. Now, later in the video, I'm going to show you how to load the correct VTX table and what the VTX table does. But that's a little painful for some people, so we're going to put it off for now, and we're just going to assume that our VTX table is correct for this video transmitter. It is. I've set this quad up before. And I'm going to show you the selected mode section. The selected mode section lets you change the parameters for the video transmitter. So, for example, currently I'm on Raceband channel 8. I don't know if you can read this, but that says R8 down there, and you can see the picture on my camera. If I go and change this from race 8 to race 1, nothing happens, but then I go down to the lower right and hit save, and the video transmitter goes to a different channel. Now, a really good video transmitter will have a clear, clean LED readout here showing you the band, channel, and power that the video transmitter is on. And that's another good way to check if you're not sure whether smart audio is working or if you're trying to figure out what channel your video transmitter is on. So again, I'll go from race one up to race eight. I'll hit save and we can see the LED readout here quickly change. This is a very desirable feature in a video transmitter, although not all video transmitters have it. It's a, not a must-have, but it certainly is a nice-to-have. So we've got band, channel, and power, which sort of intuitively makes sense if you've used video transmitters before. Next up, let's take a look at pit mode. And pit mode is designed to solve the problem of needing to power up your quad to check your video or to do some other work on your quad while you're in the pits at a race. The problem is that if people are racing and you power up your quad, you'll blast them with your video transmitter and cause a problem. Pit mode causes the video transmitter to output an extremely low power value, like 0.1 milliwatts, to the point where if it's more than like five feet away, you just basically see static and you kind of, but you can kind of put your head right up next to the video transmitter, put your goggles right up next to it and pick up video. And the idea is that you can power up without interfering with other people. Frankly, still not a good idea to power up in the pit at races, even if you are using pit mode, but it still has some use. So if I just do pit mode here and hit save, then we should go into pit mode and if I just go this far away, the signal should get super weak and the LED, the power LED should show that we're in pit mode. It's not. In fact, ah, pit mode has turned off. No, I said go into pit mode. Some video transmitters will refuse to go into pit mode after they have first powered up. Some video transmitters will refuse to go into pit mode except by pressing a button on the video transmitter. They won't do it via Betaflight. So that option uh, via Betaflight is not always 100% reliable. I think that Smart Audio 2.1 will go back into pit mode, but Smart Audio 2.0 won't. Now, it turns out that pit mode can work in two different ways. One is the way that I just told you, where it transmits on a very, very low output power. The other is a way where you put in a frequency. Like some people will, some races will have uh, channel uh, frequency 5900 is the sort of dump channel. And anybody can power up on 5900 and the racers will all use other frequencies. Well, no one really does this anymore, but it's a, it's, a, it's a hypothetical thing. If that was the case, you could put the pit mode frequency in as 5900 or whatever you want it to be. And then when it didn't work either. 
What if we do 59.17? No, it didn't like that. What's wrong with you? No, you don't like anything. Okay, well, I don't know why that's not working either, but the idea is you could put in a frequency and when you activate pit mode, instead of going to low power, it'll just jump to that frequency. If you set it to zero, then it just goes to low power. Next, we've got the low power disarm option. And I really like this option and I use it on a lot of my quads, but there's a, there's a hidden catch you need to be aware of. What low power disarm does is when you disarm the quad, then it goes down to 25 milliwatts. So I'm going to set my power here to 800 milliwatts. But the problem with having a high output power is when I've got the quad just sitting here on my desk like it's doing right now, the video transmitter gets super hot and can shut down. It usually doesn't damage itself, but it's just not great to have it sort of cooking itself. Uh, and what this does is when the quad's disarmed, it drops to 25 milliwatts and it doesn't overheat. And then as soon as you arm, boop, it pops up to 800 milliwatts and then you can fly. The hidden gotcha of the low power disarm option is that let's say you're flying at 800 milliwatts and you crash way, way out there in the field and then you disarm because you crashed. Oops, now you're at 25 milliwatts and you lose video. So what do you do? Well, one thing you can do is you can set low power disarm to on until first arm. And what that does is we stay at 25 milliwatts until the very first time you arm the quad, then we go to, go to whatever the power is set to and we stay there forever until you power down. And that's actually what I like to use. <sighs> Alrighty, it's time to talk about the VTX table, the most confusing and annoying part of the video transmitter tab. But before we do that, if I've taught you something that you didn't already know, would you mind going down and hitting the like button? If not, hey, I understand, I'm gonna keep trying. <coughs> Meanwhile, I'll power cycle my quad so it stops beeping at me. Here's what the VTX table does. Here's why it exists. Smart audio and tramp telemetry let the flight controller tell the video transmitter what frequency and what output power to use. And it turns out that the output power is baked into the flight, uh, into the video transmitter. If a video transmitter only comes from the manufacturer able to output 400 milliwatts, you can't, the flight controller can't like tell it to go to one watt. Well, it, it can, but the VTX will go, sorry, buddy, I can't do that. That's nothing. That's safe. There's nothing to worry about there. But smart audio and tramp telemetry can also tell the video transmitter to go to certain frequencies. And here's the thing. Not all frequencies are legal to use in all environments, in all countries. And Betaflight doesn't want to be responsible. The Betaflight devs don't want to be responsible if somebody uses a flight controller to tell a video transmitter to go to a frequency that isn't legal, and then what? The Federal Communications Commission goes after the Betaflight developers and like fines them for, for what? I mean, if anything, they would go after the video transmitter manufacturer. But anyway, I'm getting off topic. This, that's not what this video is about. That is the concern of the Betaflight devs. And so what they did is they created the VTX table function and the manufacturer publishes a VTX table. You load the VTX table and the VTX table tells the flight controller what frequencies and output powers your video transmitter is capable of doing. And if you put in a frequency that isn't legal in your area, well, that's not the beta flight dev's fault. That's your fault and no one can hold them responsible. But the reason it's super annoying is that if you load the wrong VTX table for your video transmitter, it won't work right and finding the correct VTX table can be super annoying. So what does a VTX table consist of anyway? It consists of a number of bands and those bands have a letter and a name associated with them. And you'll see that in your, in your goggles and your on-screen display as you flip around. Um, they have frequencies. These are actual megahertz frequencies for the channels in this band. And then there's power levels, and that's the number of power levels that your VTX can support. And each of those power levels will have a value and a label. Now the label is easy to explain. The label is just a two, as many as three characters. It can be anything you want. It's just something that the OSD will show when you activate that power. So you could be, you know, level one, level two, level three, it doesn't matter. My point is that's just some text strings. Now, usually, usually, let me click away and get back so I don't mess up my VTX table. Usually that will be a number of milliwatts. Makes sense. 
25, 200, 500, 800, whatever your video transmitter supports. But it can be anything, it's just a text string. The value, on the other hand, this one, if this isn't right, if this isn't what your video transmitter expects, your video transmitter will lock itself at the lowest output power that it supports. And this is important because people will say, hey, I've got, I've got smart audio set up, I've got device ready, yes, everything is working, but whenever I change output power, no matter what I do, it stays at 25 milliwatts. Almost always that means that your power values are not correct for your video transmitter. We'll come back to that. The last thing I need to get in the interest of completeness is this factory toggle. The factory toggle means that this band is built into your video transmitter. So if you have a factory toggle here, when the flight controller talks to your video transmitter, it will not say go to 5865 megahertz. It will say go to race band one and the video transmitter will know that that is 5658 megahertz. But you can actually make your own bands if you want to. This is gonna be the JB band, and we're gonna use the letter J, and it is not a factory band. If I enable this and I put nonsense in here, the video transmitter won't know what to do with it. But if I turn that factory band off, I, you know what channels I like the best? 5658, 5865, uh, ooh, 59, Oh, one, I don't, it's no, why would you do this? There are reasons why you would do this, but my point is the factory bands are built into the video transmitter. If you create your own custom band for some reason, then you would uh, leave factory off and you would put in whatever frequencies you want here. Like if you're a racer and you're gonna do like an IMD6 van or your multi-GB, uh, they're using some weird combination of race band and fat shark band, that's when you would create a custom band here. That's why you would do that. So then, how do you find the correct VTX table for your video transmitter and load it in so the damn thing works? The first thing I would do, if you're using Configurator 10.8, and this works whether you're using Betaflight 4.3 or an earlier version, but if you're on Configurator 10.8, you have access to the Presets tab. And in the Presets tab, we can choose a VTX preset. And there are many VTX tables for many different video transmitters, and we can just try and find our video transmitter. Mine is the Rush Ultimate, uh, 20 by, Rush Ultimate, Rush. Oh, great. Here's a, say, here's a video uh, VTX table for, oh, I see. There's one preset, and we pick which of these we're using. So mine is the Rush uh, Tiny Tank, I think is the one I have. Great. And if I hit Show CLI, here's the CLI to load that video transmitter table. No, that's not right, because mine goes up to 800 milliwatts, and you can see here power labels only goes up to 350. Hmm, so that's clearly not right. What about the tank ultimate? Oh yeah, that's right, that's my video transmitter. It goes up to 800 milliwatts. So you still gotta load the right one. You can take a look and see what it's gonna do, uh, but that is probably the simplest way to do this. We would just click on this, we would hit pick, and then we would hit save and reboot. I'm not gonna do that because this is actually a working quad and I don't wanna mess up its configuration. Now, what if your video transmitters table is not in there? <sighs> well, you gotta cross your fingers and hope it's out there somewhere on the internet. And I don't know, um, like, let's just try to find one. The Panda RC VTX Nano. Okay, first question, does it support smart audio? Yes, it does, okay. Here, we can see here that it clearly does. They're saying it supports IRC Tramp. Okay, can we find a VTX table for it? That's the question. So let's just search for Panda, Panda RC VTX Nano VTX table. Aha, aha, here we go. We're getting it. Panda RC VTX table. There we go, bingo. FPV Cycle had it. So here on the FPV Cycle product page is a CLI dump. Here is the VTX table for this video transmitter. We would just take this and we would paste it into the video transmitter tab. That's what you gotta do. You, if, if it's not in the presets tab, you just have to search around and find it. And that's why this is so annoying because if you can't find it, then you can't get your dang video transmitter working, right? And the Betaflight devs would say, it's on the manufacturers, they need to publish this information. And the users would say, <laughs> but there you go. Thankfully, there is another resource out there to help you find VTX tables for your video transmitter. This GitHub repo by JackJan4 has collected a whole bunch of VTX tables, but there's something different about these ones than what I've shown you before. Um, first of all, 
they're they're quite old, many of them, but they're still relevant because they haven't changed. So if your video transmitter is in here, you can absolutely use it. Let's pick the uh, the Raised Day Quads Mach 3. But what's different about these files is that they are not a CLI dump like you have seen. They are a different type of file called a JSON file. And what that means, practically speaking, is the way that you get them into Betaflight Configurator is a little different. So if you're going to use a JSON file, the simplest thing to do is to start with this open curly bracket, okay? And I'm going to highlight from that open curly bracket all the way down to the last close curly bracket. I'm gonna highlight the whole JSON file. I'm gonna right click and copy. And then here in Betaflight Configurator in the video transmitter tab, I'm going to choose load from clipboard. And when I do that, it should replace my current VTX table. And at that point I can then hit save and then it will save that. Now, if I highlight the wrong stuff, like do you see that I've highlighted extra stuff up here? I'm not just highlighting the JSON file and I'm gonna highlight some extra stuff down here. If I do it wrong, then when I say load from clipboard, you see here in the, up, in the upper left, error while loading from clipboard, the contents are not correct. That's what that means. You've copied the wrong stuff and it's not valid. The other thing I can do is if I download that JSON file and save it to my hard drive somewhere, I can go in and I can load from file. And sure enough, here it is. And I can just load that same thing from a file if that's what you prefer to do. And incidentally, if you've got a VTX table that's working for you, if you've customized it in some way, you can also hit save to file to make your own JSON file that you can then load back in later, or you can load it on a different quad. Lastly, we've got save Lua script here. And this is, I think this is actually not needed anymore. If you wanted to do use the Betaflight Lua script to change your video transmitter settings, you would need to download this Lua script using the save Lua script button to import your VTX table into the Betaflight Lua script. But when you start the Betaflight Lua script now, it says downloading VTX table. And I think, I don't think you even have to do that anymore. So I would just leave that alone. Yes, I can confirm. Betaflight uh, Wiki says that you do not need to do this anymore. It automatically downloads the, the, the VTX table. So that button, I don't think is used anymore. Next up, we're gonna talk about the OSD tab, the on-screen display that lets you, well, for one thing, access menus to adjust your video transmitter settings using smart audio. But in addition to that, you can see a whole bunch of information about your quad. And we're gonna go through this list. We're gonna talk about all these things, how to set up your OSD, that is in the next video. I'll put a card on screen if the video has released, or there's another card on screen with the whole playlist if you wanna find another video in here. I'll see you there.